And now we're going to take a look at the creepy cellar expansion for Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters, one of our all-time favorite kids games. Uh, the creepy cellar expansion for Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters was designed by Brian Yu. Features artwork from Piero. This is the same pair that brought you the original game. Uh, interestingly, part of this expansion was released previously as the Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters expansion pack. That was back in 2017. Now, this was only available at cons. Um, a couple online stores had it, like the Board Game Geek Store, but that's it. Uh, the Creepy Cellar includes everything you got in that expansion and some new material. Actually, quite a bit of new material, including a new board with more rooms on it. So what this means uh, that I think is important to note is that if you already have the expansion pack, there's a good chance you may still want to pick up Creepy Cellar, even though that would make some of that expansion, well, all of that expansion pack useless. You'd have duplicates for that. Though I'm guessing that the number of hardcore Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunter fans that picked up that expansion is generally small compared to the entire uh, range of, of yeah. owners. Yeah, this is a this is a Mattel mass market game that actually is, uh, has, I think, has a great appeal for, for gamers. So what this does, what this creepy seller expansion does is change up the gameplay of ghost fight and treasure hunters in a number of ways now this isn't like a modular expansion with some new stuff you can add but rather a totally new way to play the game due to this a lot of what you get in creepy seller actually replaces what you have in the base game where you don't need the stuff in the base game anymore while playing creepy seller now, we don't have an unboxing of this one, so you'll have to check out the pictures on uh, that'll go on the YouTube review or on the blog to see the components. But what is in the box? All right, so what you get in Creepy Cellar is a totally new deck of ghost cards. This completely replaces the original. You also get 12 new treasure tokens, which replace the original eight from the base game. Along with that, you get some new stuff, like a whole new game board that attaches to the other game board. Well, that isn't physically attached, but you put it next to the other game board, which has two new rooms on it that fits at the side of the base game board. You also get two new decks of cards, one for the Ghost King and one deck of Cellar cards. You also get some new secret passage tiles, some new jinxed item tokens, as well as two more haunts. I got to do math. Four more ghosts and the Ghost King miniature. I guess you call it miniature. I don't know, the piece, the playing piece. All right, so how do we use all this new and replacement material with our copy of Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters? All right, so the biggest change that happens with Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters Creepy Cellar is the goal of the game. In the original game, the goal was for the kids to sneak into this haunted mansion, grab a treasure, get out of the haunted mansion, drop it off outside, and go back in and keep doing this to get all eight treasures. This changes in the expansion. Now, instead, the kids are locked in the house as soon as they enter, need to collect 12 treasures and bring them to these idols in the creepy cellar. Once they bring the 12 treasures to put them on the right idols, they're going to unlock the front door, and then they all have to escape. Which much, must really change the play experience just in that, because everything you've memorized about the doors and, and, and efficient pathways is going to be different now. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I expected when reading the rules for the first time. Like this almost feels like a new game, like a, a, a Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters Part 2, more so than Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters with an expansion. Now, to play the new game, you start by placing the original board with the new seller board in the center of the table. You're randomly going to place one cursed treasure in every room on the original board. You're going to shuffle the three decks and put them on a space indicated on the boards. The jinx tiles are put face down and mixed up, placed beside the board. The ghost king, which is a new cool looking blue king, blue ghost peach, goes in room L on one of the rooms on the board that used to hold a regular ghost. And then four regular ghosts are placed out in four specific rooms. So you don't care what letters they're in. Uh, so you end up with four ghosts and the ghost king on the board to start. Turns play out similar to the original game. Uh, you're going to roll the, the one, the movement die. Uh, you're going to draw a ghost card as long as there's a ghost shown on the die, which is on one of five sides. So one to five shows a ghost. Uh, the, the six just has a six. You're going to draw that ghost card. You're going to do what the ghost card says. Then you're going to move your character a number of squares equal to the number on the die. Yes, this is a rolling move. If you land on a square, if you end your turn on a square with a, a room with a treasure, you can pick it up. And when you do that, the miniatures are actually designed so it fits in their backpack, which is pretty cool. Um, if there's 
that room has a ghost in it or what's called a haunt, which is a, a bigger and nastier ghost. You have to fight that ghost if able to. Well, it seems quite similar in mechanics, but it's the details of, of, the, of each turn that really matter. Yeah, the big thing here is what comes up in that ghost deck, right? You've got a completely new ghost deck. It's got a purple deck back. It's a lot thicker than the original one, and there are some new things that can happen. First off, there's the basic ghost, right? Just like the original game, there is a card for every room on the board. It's from A to N now, and if you draw that room number, you put a ghost in it. This is going to be familiar to people who play games like Pandemic as well. It's basically the same mechanic. You draw a room card, you put a ghost in it. Uh, so there are new cards in the deck for the new rooms in the cellar. Those work just like every other room. If you get two ghosts in the room, if you go to add a third ghost, it turns into a haunt, which can cause the game to end. If all the haunts are out, you lose. Then there's the green and blue locked cards. Those locked doors in the map. These are from, same as in the basic, or sorry, same as the original game, but only in the advanced rules. Um, then there's the draw two and shuffle and the draw three and shuffle cards, as well as the just shuffle card. Those all do the same thing as the original game, but now you're going to shuffle both the ghost deck and the ghost king decks, but no other changes to that. Now the ghost king card, there's uh, multiples of these in the deck. So if you draw a ghost king, this is when something new happens. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw a ghost king card from a separate deck, the ghost king deck, and move the ghost king to that room. Now, if the ghost king is ever in a room with two other ghosts, it immediately turns those ghosts into a haunt and then goes to the next room and alphabetically, which can just be nasty. This can lead to a cascading haunting effect as the ghost king just hammers through all the rooms creating haunts. Now, if the rooms he moves into don't have any other ghosts or only have one, it doesn't do anything. Now, another rule with the ghost king is you can't fight the ghost king. You can't defeat the ghost king. The ghost king is permanent. Now, the final new card type in the ghost deck is the trap door card. Your character gets yanked through a trap door and comes out in another room. You draw a card from the Ghost King deck, move to that room, and then take the rest of your turn as normal. Wow, they've really taken action to minimize um, any chance of path memorization and optimization that, that could happen in that game. I mean, there was a whole lot of, okay, we're going to do this, and then on your turn, if you do this, and, and with all these changes, they're, they're, yeah. you don't have that anymore. Now, one of the things you do have that's exactly the same is fighting ghosts and hauntings. That's identical. You still use the black dice. Uh, with the additional rule, you can't ever defeat the ghost king. Now, a welcome new addition to this expansion that I really like are secret patches tiles. Uh, these are added to four of the rooms. They tend to be in the four corners. What these secret passages do is make a connection to the other rooms that have secret passages. For one movement point, you can move from any room with a secret passage to another that's something that makes it way easier to get around the board compared to the original game. Now, the thing though, with these tiles is they can only be used once. So if you go through a secret passage, it removes your origin tile. So like, if you go from A to C, you remove the A. If you go from C to A, you'd remove the C. Now there is a way to get those back by delivering jinxed items, but we'll get back to jinxed items in a little bit. And once again, uh, movement impact really seems to be a giant theme in this expansion. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the creepy cellar and other ways to move around the <laughs> room. It's creepy cellar and secret passages actually wouldn't have been a bad term for this game. So next up, we have the new treasure tiles. I said, you're going you're gonna to get rid of the originals. The original game had eight tiles. They didn't really do anything. Like they're numbered one to eight. And if you were playing on nightmare mode, you had to get them out of a house in order. That's it, right? Like there wasn't anything any special about them except for that. Well, now each of the treasure tiles, for one, there's 12 of them. So there's more to get. There's 12 instead of eight. And each of these are cursed treasures. And while carrying them, you have a penalty. So there's one that reduces your movement by one. There's one that makes you draw two ghost cards instead of one every turn. There's one that requires you to have an ally with you when fighting any type of ghost. There's one that stops you from using the secret passages that we just talked about. And one terrible one that adds a ghost to the room you're in before moving every turn. And then there's one that pins you if you're in a room with a ghost. So if any ghosts are in your room, you can't leave until you defeat them. And that really changes things up from, from the original game. I mean, now all of a sudden, you know, they've changed up the movement drastically and now they're really just turning the game upside down compared to the original. No, oh, I agree. Now, earlier I noted the goal of the game is to bring the treasures to the cellar, right? You want to bring them to the idols. Well, the way you do that is that you have to travel to the appropriate room in the cellar while holding a treasure. Now, there's two different rooms added. 
each room has six drop-off spots with the right room having the odd numbered spots and the left room having the even numbered spots and the treasures have to be dropped off in order so you have to drop off the one spot in the right room and then someone's going to have to drop off in the two spot in the left room and then the three spot in the right room going back and forth so similar to the advanced rules when it comes except you're dropping off instead of getting out yeah exactly but it's, it's different because in the advanced rules, it's the treasure tiles that determine what order they have to go in. Whereas here, it doesn't matter what treasure you drop. It's what order you drop them off in. Right. So that is a big change. Where in the, the original advanced rules, you're going to run all the way to the D room to find out that that's the eight. You don't even need it until the end of the game. You don't get that feel at all. Right. This is more, which direction am I going? And man, is there a lot of, are you going to get there before me? So you're trying to optimize your turn and not waste your time going to this one because someone's going to go drop that off and you're basically swapping between the two basement spots. Right. Now, I will note that with the difficulty variants, there is a way to play with the old tiles. And if you do that, you have to do both. You not only have to place the tiles one, two, three, four, five, the one has to go on the one, the two has to go on the two, the three has to go on the three. So that, that well, is, that, a, that that's, is that's a whole nightmare, nightmare level. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So after you drop off a treasure, you do something new. You draw a seller card. Now, these are a mix of good and bad things. When I first started playing, I thought it was going to be like mostly good things. No, it's mostly bad. Uh, there are six good cards, 10 bad cards. Now, what you can do is you can find a set of keys that unlocks all the doors. Uh, for anyone who's played the game on Nightmare Mode, that's huge. Uh, you just get a free move. You roll the die, immediately move. A really nice one lets you remove one ghost from anywhere on the board. Not a haunt, but a ghost. And then the bad cards include adding a ghost to a random room you're going to draw from the king deck or ending up with a jinxed item. Now, jinxed items are another new thing in this game. These are little square chits that, again, go in your backpack. And you can't help but hold on to this jinxed item because it's cursed, right? And it fills up your backpack and you can't collect any treasure tiles while you have a jinxed item because your backpack's full. You also can't leave the house with a jinxed item. And remember, to win the game, you'll have to leave the house. Now, what's nice is you do get a bonus for delivering a jinxed item. So every jinxed item has a letter on it for what room you can return it to. And if you're able to end your turn in that room, you can drop off your jinxed item. And when you do that, you can then take one of those secret rooms, secret passages you used, and put it back into play. So it's a way to get the secret passages back up. Once... All treasure is safely placed in the cellar, one through 12. The players still have to escape the house. Um, weirdly, it says escape the castle in the rules, which I'm like, wait, castle? And I even checked the original rule book. It says house everywhere else in these rules. So I don't know why it says castle. <laughs> if you can get all of the players out of the house, again, with no jinxed items, you win. If at any time all the hauntings are on the board, the players lose. That is the exact same lose condition from the original game. Though, this expansion does add two new hauntings, so it does give you a bit more breathing room from the original. Now, is it everyone is out, and, or no one wins, or if one player gets out, you can call them a winner, Is it or is it explicit? It's, it's all or none. Everyone gets out, or you all lose. You okay. can't leave anyone behind. Leave no kids behind. <laughs> so that's the basic rules. The basic rules, interestingly, in this game start at the nightmare difficulty level, considered to be the most difficult. It's only in the back of the book does it give you ways to make the game easier, which is a twist from the original. The original definitely stepped up the other way with here's the basic rules, and if you want to make it more interesting, do this. So the basic game is use the original eight treasures and remove the secret doors and remove the draw and shuffle cards, which is very similar to the basic rules of the original game with the new goal, right? Where you're still, you're still moving the treasures to the basement to unlock the front door to get out. Then there's the advanced setting, which has you use those original tokens. And this is one I mentioned earlier, where they have to be placed in order. So the one on the one, the two on the two. Interestingly, that is considered easier than the nightmare setting because you only have eight to place instead of 12. Um, and you do, I'll put all the nasty cards back in. The lock door cards and the shuffle cards are back in. Well, it's good to know that the players who prefer the lighter play still have an option with the expansion. Uh, but is it as easy as the original when, when you go to that easier mode or is it still a harder game? Well, I think that's jumping ahead a bit, uh, but it's actually kind of a mix of both. And I'll get into that in a little bit after I go over some of the other stuff, my other thoughts on it. So before getting into the gameplay, 
um right away i say components are awesome like they are great um this it's the same as ghost fight and treasure hunter so if you've seen that you know um so it's to be expected but i was just impressed by the quality like nice mounted board great i, I love the minis in this game the, the rubbery plastic they're made of like you you can't you could run these over they can be squished like you're not going to damage these they look awesome they're cute they're not spooky creepy they're cute ghosts uh the tokens came pre-punched like they're a nice thing the card quality is good um i've proven that these cards can stand up to many plays with my original copy these are the same um the kids especially my youngest love the new card art so the new deck has new card art whereas i guess the king deck has the old card art from the old rooms and they like seeing the new things the ghosts are doing in each room um the other thing i like too that i didn't catch on until like third or fourth play is there are no words anywhere to be seen except for the fact that it uses the letters a through n this is 100 language independent everything is artwork and iconography to, to get your point across. And there's a lot more iconography in this game because all the tokens, right? You got the Jinx tokens, you have the, the treasure tokens, each have a symbol on the back of them. You got new cards with new things going on. And all of them just made sense. Like it literally took one reference of the book once each, right? What's that mean? Okay, I, I'll never have to look that up again. Like when you look at the draw two ghost cards, well, the picture of the token shows two ghost cards. And the room, the one that says you can't use the, the secret passage, well, shows you the symbol for the secret package with the traditional red knot, you know, circle with a line through it. Like it all just made sense. So none of the quality problems we saw in some of the alternate versions of uh, the game. Yeah, this does not have the Ghostbuster problem. We will just call it. There, There is a different printing. Uh, it is worth pointing out this is not compatible with Ghostbusters Protected Barrier. This is only works with Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters because of the boards being completely different sides and the card quality being different. The boards won't even line up because uh, there were definitely quality issues right. with the original Ghostbusters Protect the Barrier version of Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. All right. Before getting into details about Creepy Seller and my final thoughts on it, what I think about it, if you haven't gotten an idea from what I've already said, I do want to point out that I love Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. Like, I adore it. Like, it is just such a good game. I've said it many times in this podcast. I've said it on social media. Every time someone puts a Facebook question about kids games, I'm jumping in there recommending this game. Like, the, the, I am an ambassador for, for Ghost Fighting Treasure. And Mattel should be paying me for this. Uh, this is just as much fun. That, like, it's the only kids game I've played that is just as much fun for kids as is for adults. Like, it, it's not only a game my kids will take down off the shelf, play on their own. I hear them laughing. I hear them having a great time. But it's a game, and they'll have fun playing with us. But it's a game I'll break out without the kids around. Like I have brought this out to public play game nights, like like heavy gamers out to play at, a, at the game store, ready to play some games and we're playing Ghost White and Treasure Hunters. It's that good. I, I This is a game I'll break out with my regular game group. I, I am a fanboy of this game and I don't expect it to change. Now, I, I know I've played it with your kids and with adults uh, at parties uh, and with adults and kids at parties mm -hmm. uh, and, and just really gotten into it. You just, yeah. you get into the game because... There's a lot of thought involved. Yeah. I, I it's, it's got a kid's theme, but it's not a kid's game. Kids can play it. Yeah. Now, moving into Creepy Cellar. As for this expansion, I was a bit surprised by what you got with this. Like, I, I thought you were going to get modules. Like, I really did. The, the fact that you could buy that old expansion and, like, Board Game Geek for a while had a geek up version where you could just get the king. Like, I just expected it to be all these little modules that I could add to it like like you could just I, i'm gonna have the king in my game and make it a little bit more difficult or you know what we're gonna use the secret passages just to make the game a bit easier or i'm gonna use both we're gonna have the king and the secret passages but ignore the seller we don't need that and and i guess you could do that but that's not how it's designed like that's not how the rule book's written instead of a bunch of modules you get a totally new mode of play something that as I mentioned earlier, kind of feels like a new game. Like it feels like I'm playing Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters 2.0 rather than Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters with an expansion. So I, I wouldn't have expected the modular format myself uh, as this just doesn't feel like a hobby game. Uh, and, and really that's a hobby game sort of thing as opposed to something you'd expect from Hasbro. 
it's true, but it was a German Euro game before it was brought over by Hasbro. So to me, it is still a hobby game. It just happened to get marketed as a kid's game, which in a way I think, well, for one, it did good for them because it's available in Target. But it's, I think a lot of hobby gamers are going to overlook it because of that. Right. Now, I do have to say, while reading the rules, I expected uh, Creepy Seller to make it feel like a different game. Like, I thought it wasn't going to feel like Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters anymore. It's going to feel like a new game. But somehow it doesn't. Like, it just, everything that was added fits in so well with the theme and the general flow of roll the die, flip the card to see what happens, then move. At the end of your turn, pick up stuff or fight. Like, that's all still there. And it still very much feels like you're playing Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters, but Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters with a bit more going on. Like, there's just more options each turn. Um one of the things that i like is the fact that, that it's not obvious that i this is what i need to do every turn i have variety and as sean's noted a couple times there are definitely more potential paths to take more pathways more routes to get everywhere on the board there's more to worry about right like you have curses now you have jinxed items and well the ghost king to worry about on the board nothing wrong with more of a game we already love so long as it doesn't tamp down the fun yeah now, one aspect that I like about this is just in general, your turn's more interesting, right? In the base game, most turns are uh, draw a card, put a ghost on the board, and move. And that's it. Now and then, if you're using the advanced rules, you might have draw extra cards, the door's locked, so you post, put, put extra ghosts out. But that's kind of it. Now, on your turn, you're going to roll the dice. Maybe you're going to place a ghost. Or maybe you get yanked through a trap door. Or maybe the ghost king moves. Or maybe the doors become locked. Or maybe you're going to do something else. You, you, the new ghost will just get placed out like normal. Along with this, the draw two and draw three then shuffle cards are less punishing. They were what made nightmare mode in the original game a nightmare. This happened because the deck is diluted in a way. The, the game has more special cards, right? There's more chances of drawing the trap door or drawing the, the, the king, right? There's more little different things in the thing that aren't just place a ghost. So we found that the drawing two or three didn't tend to have you place two or three ghosts. I, I think this is a good thing because, man, they were rough in the advanced version of the game. Yeah, which it's a nice uh, game balance issue, but depending on the setting more interesting turn could be seen as a negative, especially in those party situations where the game is fun, but as something alongside of a good chat, which happened a lot of times, especially on yeah. like our new year's Eve nights where it wasn't as intense a game to completely distract you from True. having a good party. Yeah. It's definitely, there's more thought required. It is a more complicated game. Uh, it's probably worth looking on board game to see what people have rated the weight, but I have to assume the weight's higher. I did note the expansion rated better than the base game. So I, in general, gamers do seem to like it more. So yeah, it, it, it stepped it up from that kid's light party game in a way into something a little heavier, which in, personally, I think is a good thing, but it does depend on what you're looking for out of your game night. And then we get to the difficulty, right? Uh, so Sean asked about this and I kind of save this for later because I have quite a bit to say on this. So this is weird. Like I, I have a hard time talking about the difficulty of this game because it's so strange what they've done here. So part of that is that deck distribution I just talked of, right? Because the, the, the plus two and the plus three cards aren't as bad because the deck distribution is different. And there's way more turns where, yeah, just the ghost king moves, which really isn't a bad thing at the beginning of the game. But then if there's lots of ghosts on the board, that could be horrible. So Deck distribution definitely made it a little easier. But then there's the cursed treasures. Those are punishing. Like, like every treasure you pick up does something terrible to your character. In a fun way, like it's a good thing, but man, that ups the difficulty, right? You're either moving less or you're summoning more ghosts or you can't use the secret passages, right? So you're like, oh man, the difficulty's gotten way harder. But now they have secret passages. So these gems are easier to deliver than ever. So you're like, oh, well, yeah, I'm punished. But you know what? It's only going to take me two turns to get there because I can take the shortcut. So that kind of reduces it. But then you deliver it and you flip over a card and it ends up and puts extra ghosts out. Or you get a jinx tile. Well, now you got a jinx tile. You can't collect treasure. Well, if you can't collect treasure, you can't win. So yeah, you got to waste turns going to deliver it. But then if you do deliver it, you get one of those secret passage like it's it's just kind of up and down right and then there's the ghost king right like the ghost king you got to watch out for 
because it you definitely got to watch for the chain of haunts you don't want to have a bunch of twos in a row where it's like ghost king moves here and makes a haunt and then moves here and makes a haunt makes here and makes a haunt so you got to really watch for that but then again it doesn't kill you because well they gave you two more haunts so if it does happen it's not like you're just going to lose instantly so it, it's just weird right so the end result we found is that using the full expansion rules like the the default nightmare mode is a much harder game than the base game of ghost fighting treasure hunters like it, it's definitely a step up there uh you're not going to be able to play with little kids who and without coaching right like you, you got to work together you gotta you need more teamwork you're gonna have to to work as a team and really strategize not just run around and roll some dice but on the other hand we found the full nightmare version to be way easier than the nightmare mode in the base game and in all the times I have played the original Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters with numerous different groups, with kids, with adults, with hardcore gamers, with Euro gamers, with hardcore, I've never beat it on Nightmare. It's never happened. I've never gotten all eight out on or in order with the rooms locking and the plus two draws and the plus three draws. Meanwhile, Grace and I were able to beat Creepy Seller on Nightmare Mode with just two players. Now, I will note, two players the same as playing four players. You play four characters if you play two players. But we beat this. I've never beat Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters on Nightmare. Now, maybe we just got lucky. Maybe it was a fluke. But to me, it seems like the base game Nightmare Mode, way above Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters Basic, but still under Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters Nightmare. Well, uh, it's interesting about the teamwork um, because I felt like that I was there already. Uh, you know, I remember sitting there and and talking with uh, Tom, actually, as you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, uh, and discussing. Okay, well, uh, we got to worry about you know right now blues locked, so we got to expect green to lock. So we're I'm going to make a run down this side of the board. If you head up this way, and that way we can do. You know, I remember going through those discussions about yep. plans and, and who's going to go where. Um, I, I would say it's even higher here, especially, like I said, one of the curses is you can't fight ghosts without having someone with you. So that forces you into that teamwork role. And then there's the other one that won't let you leave a room if there's a ghost there, any type of ghost, right? Like not even a haunt. So again, that requires that whole, hey, I can't get out of here. I need some backup. And that's mainly where I saw the more interaction of it. Right. Plus, again, watching for those cascading haunts seemed to be a little more important. They, that Once you had two ghosts in a room, it was scary. But if you had two ghosts in that room and the next room and the next room, it was even scarier. Right. So overall, I was very impressed by Creepy Cellar. Uh, it makes Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters just feel more balanced more polished and definitely more of a gamer's game and less of a mass market kids game. Like I actually have a strong feeling and I don't know if this is true that the, com this was the complete game. This, this is the game, the designer designed and then Mattel went in and cut chunks off it to simplify it for the mass market. Now, I don't know if this is true. I, I actually don't know, but I have to say that it feels more complete together with creepy seller with ghost fighting treasure hunt i feel like i have more of a game a more complete finished polished game it's more interesting the difficulty seems to be better balanced um now that i finally own it i can't see playing just ghost fighting treasure hunters ever i'm always going to have the seller road i'm always going to have the king we're going to be dealing with jinxed items yeah no it, it's really good to hear and i think it really does sound like this is the difference between a hobby game and a mass market game now, always want to play with the base game and expansion does lead me to one rather annoying problem. And yes, this is a first world problem. This is a, this is a gamer problem. This is the same reason I don't like games in tins. Um, with the included plastic box inserts that come with both expand, well, the base game and the expansion, there is no way to fit the contents of the expansion in the base game box, which is a total shame. Now... I hate bringing two game boxes for one game out to game night if I can help it. Um, so I did try to stack the inserts to see if it worked and it kind of works. I've got a picture of it. I haven't shared it yet. You get the whole lids off by, you know, a, an inch or so, but it's probably a bit much. Um, what I probably I'm going to end up doing is taking the insert out of the base game and swatch swapping over to baggies for everything and everything will be loose in the box, even though they had really nice inserts. Well, there are solutions available, custom oh, inserts course. for the game that will handle the expansion and premium sleeved cards 
already on the market. Yeah, that does not surprise me at all. But then you'll never play it again if you get that. That's <laughs> true. If I get a box insert, we'll never play it. See, technically, this is my kid's game. It goes on their shelf. So maybe I should let them decide what to do. But I just worry things are going to get mixed. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 It's frustrating, but I get it. People do that. So as for final spots, um, to start off, if you have kids and don't have Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters, fix that. Like, like just go get it find it somewhere i don't i don't know where the best price is right now if you want i'll look it up at some point just hit me up online and i'll find you a good price just get ghost fighting treasure hunters if you don't have kids and you like cooperative board games at all get it like this is a great example of a thematic cooperative game that isn't just about placing and removing cubes on a map while it might be marketed to kids this game has way more than enough meat on it for hobby board gamers to enjoy especially when you throw in the higher difficulty levels. You throw that up to that nightmare difficulty level and it can be a brain burner. Now, as for Creepy Cellar, if you own Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters and like it, just, just even a little bit. If you're like, eh, kind of like Ghost, just buy it. Uh, this is a must-have. I will say, I'm assuming you can find it. This is not an easy-to-find expansion. This is a great expansion for a great game that just adds more to love. I would go so far as to say that this completes Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunter, making it a deeper game, more player options, more replayability. I'd also say that if you played Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters and thought it was okay, something you'll play but probably wouldn't suggest, this may be the thing to turn that play experience from meh to good, if not great. Well, be sure to check out our written review of the creepy seller expansion for Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters over at tabletopbellhop.com. <laughs> 